So the video you're about to watch is going to be my Paranormal Romance Readathon vlog. So I just want to first apologize for the poor quality of past Charles's footage, but I hope you guys end up enjoying the vlog because I enjoyed making this vlog. And without further ado, let's go into day one. So today is day one of the Paranormal Romance Readathon, and so for today I'm going to be diving into The Darkest Night by Gina Showalter. This actually fulfills the challenge of reading, I believe, a book title with the word dark in the title. So I'm already like about four chapters into this one. I'm kind of feeling a little bit meh about it. I don't think the inciting incident is particularly interesting, but I am a little bit intrigued about the world, so we will see how this one goes for today. And then later I may update you guys on some of the books I'm currently reading on my Kindle. Okay, so I'm checking it back in because I just finished The Darkest Night by Gina Showalter, and again, this um, completes the challenge of read a uh, paranormal romance with the title Dark in it. And, like, quick thoughts about this book. I felt like the first, like, 70% was like very info dumpy. We were like getting introduced to this world, we we're getting thrown a bunch of new characters, this group, we we're getting like thrown all this mythology about the world. It felt like it was just like too much. And like I really struggled to really follow the plot because so much was being thrown at the reader. I was kinda like, wait, 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 who are you again? What's going on? What do the hunters have to do with this? So like I was just felt like all over the place, but then probably by chapter 18, it started to make a bit more sense and I started to actually find myself enjoying the story, which to me I was super surprised because I literally thought I was going to hate this book because of that first like 70 to 80%. But I'm really excited to see where this series goes. I talked to Nicole, she told me to read this book. Her channel is Who Picked This Book. I'll link her channel down below. But yes, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think I'm gonna give it like a four out of five stars or like really it's more like a 3.5, but I'll round it up to a four on Goodreads. Now there's also another book that I just started today and I'm absolutely loving. It is marked by Elizabeth Nodden and this is the first book in the Eternals Guardian series. And for this, I believe this will fulfill the prompt of Faded Mates. Now this is a really cool spin on mythology. So you have like your original Greek mythology, but then you also have this like subgroup called the Argonauts, who are essentially descendants of like some of the greatest Greek heroes and their tasks were basically protecting, I guess you could say Olympus from the underworld. And so I'm doing a horrible job explaining this, but I'm loving it so far. I'm already like over a hundred pages into this and I just started this one today. So I probably will be finishing this one up very soon, probably not tonight, because it's like almost like 11.30 where I'm at right now, but I definitely will be finishing this one tomorrow. So it is day two of the readathon and I actually have finished a book, but then I also started a bunch of books because you know I'm chaotic like that. So the book I finished was marked by Elizabeth Nodden. I'm gonna give this one about a 4.5 out of five stars, which I'm gonna round up to five out of five stars on Goodreads. And I really did like it, it's just, for me, my only one nitpick is that it wasn't steamy enough, and I think that's more my expectations of this book rather than something that I can fault the book for because the story was really good, the characters were really excellent, and I just really enjoyed my time reading this book. So, um, and this will count for the Faded Mates bingo box. So now on to the books I'm currently reading. I have about like 10 books that I'm currently reading. Some of these are on my TBR and some of them are not on my TBR because I just decided, why not, let's just read all the paranormal romances that I have on my Kindle, and then, if that's not enough, let's go on to audible.com and just, and just find all the paranormal romance novellas, and just download those and let's listen to those as well. So I'm kind of digging my own grave here. So I'm currently reading One Foot in the Grave by Janine Frost, this is book two in the Night Huntress series. I'm only about 117 pages into this one. I really like our prologue because we got to meet um, Ian, who is the main character of the Shades of Wicked trilogy, which is one of my favorite trilogies. It's not done yet, so I can't call it my favorite trilogy yet. But the first two books I gave both five out of five stars, and I'm really liking this one so far. This is a continuation of book one, so we follow our same characters, Bone and Cat. And I just really love their relationship when it's separated from reality. As soon as they come in contact with some other characters, I'm just kind of like, really? Do you guys really like each other that much? But overall, I'm enjoying this. I love the humor and the nice blend of steam in this book. And I'm just really excited to see where this book goes. Then this will make Lacey super happy. I'm reading Visions of Heat by Nalini Singh, and this one um, counts for the 
has an animal in it because our main character is um, a changeling and he can change into a leopard. And I, this is gonna be a little bit unpopular. I'm not loving this book as much as the first one. This book feels very similar to the first book in that we have a female Psy, a very alpha changeling, and then we also have this murder mystery subplot going on. But it's just the types of Psy that the two females are are too different. So it's a little bit different in that regard. But for me, this book is dragging quite a bit for me. And I am about 200 pages into this one, so I don't have very much left to go on this book. And I'm hoping it turns itself around, but I don't think it quite will at this point. But right now it's sitting around a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me. Oh, and I forgot to mention for this book, if I did want to count it for one of the challenges, it is a vampire romance, and I believe this one was published before... 2010. Yes, this was published in 2008. Next, I'm reading Nice Girls Don't Date Dead Men by Molly Harper, and this is book two in the Half Moon Hollow series. I believe that is what the series is called, and I can't give you too much of a plot for this book. It basically continues right after the events of the first book, but for this one, there isn't too much of a plot, and anything I could tell you about the little plot that's in this book would be a spoiler, but my biggest gripe about this book is that it really doesn't have a clear central plot, it's really character driven, and I kind of find myself kind of going like, is this really a necessary book? Because there is little to no romance in this book, and it's more focused on the side characters and our main character kind, and our main character kind of adjusting to life as a vampire. But I'm super excited to finish this one up so I can give you all my thoughts about this book. But this one fits the vampire um, square for the bingo board. And this one wasn't published before 2010, so it, this one will only count for the vampire romance square. Next, I have No Rest for the Wicked by Cressley Cole. This is book two in the Mortals After Dark series. And this one is really fun. It is kind of like a Hunger Games-esque paranormal romance story. And I'm loving it so far. You do have that Faded Mage trope, so it will count for that and it will also count for the vampire romance and I believe this one as well was published before 2010. This was published in 2006. So look I just like cleared out three challenges and I'm already doubling up on challenges. And so yeah I'm really liking this one so far. I It really pained me to put this one down but I was like I want to start some other books and then that led me down a rabbit hole. And then one of my favorite authors of all time, she's definitely one of my autobi romance authors decided to send me three of her books and just because she is so awesome she sent me her three paranormal romance books that I haven't read before and I realize I haven't even mentioned the author's name. The author's name is Lauren Smith and I'm so grateful that she decided to send me these books and I'm reading the first book currently right now because it's the perfect time to read paranormal romances, especially with this readathon going on and the dragon shift of romances. So I'm like, I gotta add some variety into the mix. So the first book is the book that I'm currently reading. It is Gregory. I believe this follows kind of like the main, or like main boss of this um, dragon family. And so the trilogy is focused around the three brothers. They're the only, I believe they're the only, what's the word? They're like the only remaining dragon shifters in the world. And our main female heroine is actually writing a dissertation on how dragons are real. And then she checks out this book and that basically leads these two characters on a path of collision and it's their romance. So the first book is Gregory, and like I said, I didn't say this before, I don't know why I said, like I said, I'm on page 166. So I definitely will be able to finish this one up pretty quickly. I also have this on audio as well, and the audio is absolutely fantastic. But let me show you the other two books. So book two is um, Mikael, and then book number three is Rorik, and this is the final book in this trilogy. And so here are the books all together. I think I prefer books two and three, the covers a little bit more than this one. Like, if I saw this on Amazon, I would definitely auto-buy this. This one, I would have to kind of do a little bit more research and read the synopsis. But, like, these two are, like, instant auto buys just for the covers alone. And if you think that was all the books I was going to show you today, I also have a ton of audiobooks that I'm listening to on my iPhone. So I'm currently reading Silent Night by Deanna Rayborn, Taming the Alpha by Savannah Stewart, and might I just say I feel like a beauty blogger kind of like holding up my phone and like to the camera with a hand behind us so we can focus. And mainly the reason why I'm doing that is because I, I feel too lazy to actually put a picture in the video. So like editing is going to be much easier for me. Future Charles will thank me. Then I have Pack by Janine Wolf. I mean, <laughs> Pack 
by Janine Frost, Rebel Heart by Anna Lowe, A Shifter's Christmas Carol by Jennifer Ashley, and a title that's way too long to pronounce by, I believe, Kristen Painter. And then finally, I have Swept Away by Anna Zares, and this is in her Krenar Chronicles series, and this is an alien faded mates romance. If I finish any of these books, I would definitely hop back on camera and give you guys my thoughts about these books. So I am back with another update. So the books that I mentioned earlier, um, I actually finished all of those. So like I am on a roll so far with this readathon. So this book wasn't on my TBR, but this is One Foot in the Grave by Janine Frost. This is book two in the, in the Night Huntress series. And I gave this one, I think I'm gonna give it like a 4.5 out of five stars. There were some things that were a little bit too over the top for my taste, but overall I really enjoyed all the plot twists. I really enjoyed the um, development that we saw in their relationship. And I'm also really excited to see what the third book entails, or holds, I should say. Then I finished Visions of Heat by Nalini Singh, and I'm going to give this one probably a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, this one was a huge letdown. Essentially, if you have read Slave to Sensation and you've read this one, you basically know that this one is essentially just a ripoff of the first one. And for me, this one just really kind of fell flat for me. And I'm so, so disappointed because Lacey has been hyping up the series as like one of her all-time favorites. And this book was just so bad. But I have hope that it gets better. I talked to Lacey and it seemed like it does get better. So hopefully it does or someone's going to get dragged. Next, I finished Mark by Elizabeth Nodden. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I don't think I talked. Did I talk about this book already? I'm sorry if I already did, but I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then I read Nice Girls Don't Date Dead Men by Molly Harper. And this is book 2 in the Half Moon Hollow series. And I'm going to give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. Like, I enjoyed... The characters, I enjoyed the development that we saw in our characters, but my one gripe with this book is that there was no central plot. We're kind of just stumbling around from A, from point A to point B to Z to X. We're just going all over the place. And so I'm really not sure where the series is going. And especially with a paranormal series, I kind of expect some type of plot. But especially for this book, I don't know how many books we're going to be following Jane. In this series because I believe the Half Moon Hollow series is like over th like around 30 books and I'm really curious to see like what the plot of the rest of these books are going to be because I, I just don't really know where this is going. Then I finished No Rest for the Wicked by Cressley Cole and I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5 stars as well. I think a lot of people are going to kill me for saying this but for a Cressley Cole book this was not as steamy as I expected it to be. It was much more heavy than what I was expecting from Cressley Cole and it was a little bit more plot focused. A lot of the themes that I touched upon in this plot are our themes such as um, grief, um, potential suicide. So there's a lot of heavy thematic elements in this book and I felt like those were done well. And those kind of took me aback a little bit because I, from Cressley Cole I just expect from beginning to end smut, but this one contained a lot of death, which I was pretty much surprised about. The world building is still one of the things that I can still lodge, or is one of the complaints that I can still lodge against this series because there really isn't any real world building. We're just kind of in different pockets. Um, I think we're still following the same Valkyrie sisters, I believe. Yeah, I believe they're part of the same sisterhood, but other than that, basically the world building is anything goes. But I'm super excited to pick up the next book in this series. And then finally, one of my favorite authors sent me, I already said um, Lauren Swift sent me a copy of Gregory as well as the other two books in this trilogy. And you guys, I really did enjoy this one. I gave this one a solid 4 out of 5 stars. i just been giving a lot of 4 out of 5 stars. No 5 out of 5 stars yet, I think. Did I give any of these books? Oh yeah, I gave two. But those are not like technically full 5 out of 5 stars. They're 4.5s, but I round them up on Goodreads, so they don't count. But I really enjoyed this one. If you're looking for a really solid Dragon Shifter romance with um, a medium level of steam, this one is definitely for you. Um, I'm just super excited because it definitely does a really great job of teasing the other two books in the trilogy. And I'm so happy that I have them. I definitely am going to be getting into those very soon. And you'll probably see me read those in this vlog. And if you thought that was all the books that I currently finished, don't forget I have a ton of novellas that I just finished as well. So I just finished Pack by Janine Wolf, and I gave this one 
a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I finished Silent Night by Deanna Rayborn and I gave this one again a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I gave Taming the Alpha by Savannah Stewart another 4 out of 5 stars. Then I gave A Shifter's Christmas Carol by Jennifer Ashley. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars as well. Then I gave Rebel Heart by Anna Lowe a 4 out of 5 stars as well. Then I gave The Vampire's Valentine's Day Surprise by Kristen Painter. I think I'm going to give this a 3.5, which is going to be rounded up to a 4 on Goodreads. Then I finished Highlander Secret by Kerrigan Byrne, and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. And this one is an historical, magical romance. That was a bad description, I'm sorry. Then I gave Swept Away by Anna Zares a 4 out of 5 stars, and this is a short story in the Krenar universe. Then I finished Dancing by Laurel K. Hamilton, and this is uh, Anita Blake vampire hunter novella and there is a threesome in this one um i give this one a four out of five stars this definitely has intrigued me to go back to the first book and read the series so who that was a lot of books um i'm kind of feeling a little bit slumpy not to lie um i started a bunch of books today that i'm just like not fully feeling but i will share those with you guys i think Maybe one or two of them are on my TBR and the rest are just like, I just decided to pick them up because they're paranormals. So I'm currently reading Fire in His Spear by Ruby Dixon. I think this is like book four or five in the Fire in His Blood series. And like, I love Ruby Dixon, but the plot of this one is so basic essentially our main heroine she's basically protecting a bunch of people and in order to continue to protect her people she decides to become a dragon's mate so that she can use the dragon to protect her people and that's essentially our setup for this book and the way our main character gets introduced is that she is the friend of the heroine of the previous book. Then I'm currently reading Magical Midlife Dating by K.F. Breen and this is a book two in the Magical Midlife series. I don't know what this series is called and this is more women's fiction than romance but it's technically shelved as romance, paranormal romance, so I'm deciding to count it for this video. Um, I forgot to mention for the Ruby Dixon book, that one will count for has an animal in it, Dragon Shifter. And, oh yeah, that's the only one that would count for. And this one, oh, I can't remember what this one would count for. Uh, what would it be for? It has an animal in it as well. I believe there's a gargoyle in this book. <laughs> but who cares? Like, honestly, like, if you watch my TBR, all those books will get read in this reading vlog. Just wait, I'm getting to all of them. And so for this one, like, I want to like it, but it's just, like, not quite clicking for me. Then I have Shadows by Kristen Proby and this is her like first um, book in like a Bayou Magical Mystical series. Essentially we follow our main heroine who can see ghosts and her sister is I guess you can call her a witch and they are investigating a serial killer. And so this book completely came out of left field for me. I was not expecting to read this. Um, I got an email saying the book was like on sale for free. So I decided like, hey, let's pick this up. And the audiobook was only like $8. So I was like, let's add this to, this to the TBR. It is paranormal romance. I don't think it's going to fit anything. But I like Kristen Proby. So I said, why the hell not? Let's add it to the TBR. And so, yeah, like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like I've been reading. I guess when you read too much, um, you tend to like just hit a string of like just really not bad books. Um, but they're not just, like, mind-blowingly, like, five-star good. They're, like, all the books that I have finished reading or all the books that I'm currently reading, they're all just really solid reads. Um, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, so I'm, like, trying to read books outside. Like, maybe it's just, like, a genre thing, so, like, let me try. I may try to just, like, add in a non-paranormal romance book into the mix, or maybe I need to, like just completely go outside the romance genre and just read something else that has like some spooky Halloween vibes to kind of get me out of this rut. But I will check back with you guys on uh, tomorrow to let you know um, if I made any progress in the books I'm currently reading. So today is day three of the Paranormal Romance Readathon and I was gonna show you some of the books that I just currently finished. Most of these were novellas and they were only available in audio but I can't remember which books those were because Goodreads decided to crash today and I already deleted the audiobooks off my phone and returned them. So I really don't remember what I just read. But once Goodreads is up and running you can go check out 
my Goodreads page, and I have a dedicated bookshelf to the Paranormal Romance Readathon, so you can see everything that I have read during this readathon, as well as my ratings. So let's get into the books I'm currently reading. So I'm currently reading Mikhail by Lauren Smith. I'm about 143 pages into this book. I'm absolutely loving it. It has a slight Dom submissive vibe to it, which I am loving. Um, this book, like the tension in this book is so good. It's not the steamiest that I have read, but the tension. It makes it so like you can't read any other book while reading this one. So I am currently reading like four other books, but this one is my main squeeze for the moment right now, and I'm absolutely enjoying it. Um, this could easily be a 5 out of 5 star read for me. Oh, and I forgot, um, if I do count this for any of the challenges, this one would um, count for the challenge of having a dragon shifter or having an animal in it. And this also counts for an indie author because Lauren Smith, to my knowledge, is an indie author. And then I'm currently reading Kiss of Crimson by Laura Adrian, and this counts for a vampire romance. Then I'm currently reading The Dichotomy of Angels by N.R. Walker. And this is an angel romance. It also counts for LGBTQIA paranormal romance. And N.R. Walker is also an indie author. Then I'm also reading Our Buddy Read, which is The Power of Hades. And this is... I actually forgot which one this would count for, but it definitely counts for more than one challenge. Because I know for sure that these two authors are indie authors. And then I'm also reading Room by Kendall Gray. And then I'm also reading For the Hell of It by Kate Corbin. And so those are all the books I'm currently reading. Um, sorry I'm not get, didn't give you any thoughts about all the other books that I mentioned on my phone. I will definitely be giving you guys a little bit more information about the books as I kind of delve more into them. I'm not very far into any of the books that were on my phone. And so also before I let you go, I also have a book haul for you guys. So some of my amazing booktube friends decided to send me some books for my birthday, which happened on October 20th. And so yeah, let's get into the books. So I received Spoiler by Olivia Dade and then In Bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks. These two books were gifted to me by Naima from Naima Reads. I believe that's her channel. I will link all her information down in the description box down below. You guys should absolutely check out her channel. And then the next stack of books is from another one of my booktube friends, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers. So up first, she sent me a finished copy of The Chosen by J.R. Ward. I don't remember what book um, this is in the Black Dagger Brother in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, but. I actually haven't started this one just yet. I think I read like the first chapter of the first book and I just never came back to it. So now I have a reason to delve back into that series because everyone is saying that this series is so good. Then if you know anything about Lacey, you know that she loves Nalini Singh and guess what she sent me? She sent me two advanced reader copies of two books in the night. Uh, what is it called? The Gil Hunter series. First we have Archangel's Tro what is this? Archangel's Prophecy, and then we have Archangel's Viper. And so I think this was like a subtle, not so subtle way to like make me continue reading this series. And I'm fine with that, like now, I have no excuse to not continue on in this series. Then I have Secret Crush Seduction. That is not a great title by um, J.C. Lee. And this is one of the Harley Quinn Desires books. And I was so nervous when I saw this because I was thinking like, I know most of the Harley Quinn titles do not have audiobooks. And I was like, I know Lacey wouldn't do this to me, but I looked it up. It has an audiobook. We are so good. Um, I also have another book of hers, uh, Sweet Mess, which came out this year as well. A lot of people have been talking about this book, so I'm super excited to delve into this one. And then somehow Lacey knew that like I wanted to read this book. Um, it is Follow Me Darkly by Helen Hart, and I believe this is like a BDSM billionaire romance. And like I saw the cover and I just saw the initial premise and I was like, I need to read this. Like I actually bought the audiobook with the hopes that I will read it soon. But like now that I have a physical copy of the book, I'm like, I have to read it now. And then Lacey also sent me the new Emily Giffen book, The Lies That Bind. And then also the new Karen Slaughter book, The Silent Wife. So I'm super thankful for Lacey for sending me all these books like she didn't have to and Naima, you didn't have to as well. But yes, so I'm super happy. I got these books a while ago and they're just now popping up in this vlog. So I will check back in once I have finished Meat Kill and then I have also like got a decent way into another book so I have a little bit more to say. But yes, uh, so far this readathon is going super well for me. I hope it is going well for you guys. 
And yeah, I will leave it to you, future Charles. Hey guys, so it is day four of the Paranormal Romance Readathon, and I actually finished the book. Um, I forgot what book that was, but let me look on my phone. <laughs> And I can tell you what book it was. So the, so the book I just finished was A Power of Hades by Eliza Rain and Rose Wilson. And this was our buddy read for the Paranormal Romance Readathon. And I am so sorry that we chose this book because I did not know that this book had a huge cliffhanger. So I guess I should say spoiler alert. But um, yeah, I did not know that. And then I got to the end and I was like, wait, how many books are in this series? Dang it. <laughs> Now I need to read the whole series because I need to know what happens next. And yeah, I, overall I felt it was a really great paranormal mythology-esque romance. And it did enough to keep me interested, but also it gave me a decent amount of answers. So I wouldn't get too frustrated with the narrative. And so I ended up giving this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I will definitely be reading the subsequent books in this series. Maybe not in this vlog, but at a later time because... I'm feeling a little bit of like a paranormal romance burnout and just in general I just want to take a moment to kind of get this off my chest a little bit um I've been feeling a little bit burnt out I feel like I can only focus on so many things at once and I feel really bad that I'm not commenting and interacting on my other booktube friends videos and try to interact with their content as much as possible but I am trying so hard to like make sure that I'm consistent with my YouTube and my Instagram and my Twitter that those are like my real main focuses in terms of my book two space but then I also I have a new puppy she's like a little over seven months now and when I'm not dealing with her I have work and then just like book tube stuff really kind of falls to the bottom and so I still have been reading but since I'm reading it doesn't leave me much else time to like focus on other smaller things that I would like to do if that makes any sense and just as a PSA to anyone I know 2020 has been crazy so self-care is super important if you're feeling burnt out please take care of yourself if you need to step away from making videos or doing whatever take a break from reading and like watch Netflix or something do something that brings you joy and that also replenishes you that's a very important thing about self-care. You want to do something that you enjoy, but then you also want to feel fulfilled and recharged through that activity, if that makes any sense. Oh, and I also finished another book. Let me go get it. And the book is Mikael by Lauren Smith. This is book two in the Brothers of Ash and Fire trilogy, and I absolutely love this one. My only gripe is I ended up giving this a 4.5, and the reason why I took off that 0.5 star rating was because it has a very similar format to the first book in that the first half of the book is a little bit more like a captor romance and then the second half is usually very plot heavy and for me it does feel like it's slightly two books and you kind of lose the momentum that you're building for the relationship that you get in the first part of the book but at least in this one I felt that the resolution was handled a tad bit better than the first book and I just love this couple so much I think their story was way more dynamic and a bit steamier just like a snatch bit steamier but definitely it was steamier and also before I sign off I will be reading um, the kiss of crimson by Laura Adrian uh, this is like book two in her midnight breeze vampire series and yeah I'm super excited to delve into that book I think I already got like two one or two chapters into that book i mentioned that I was reading room by kendall gray and i have took that off my tbr because i really just want to focus on the books that i initially put on my tbr instead of adding 20 other books but i will catch you in another clip so today is day five of the paranormal romance readathon and i actually just finished a book so i just finished kiss of crimson by laura adrian this is book two in the midnight um breeders series I believe that's the name of the series but let's kind of get into my thoughts about this book because they're kind of a mixed bag so on one hand I love the world I love the world building that we get in this book I like how we have like two types of vampires we have essentially have vampires vampires that haven't succumbed to bloodlust and then we have vampires that are called rogues who have succumbed to the bloodlust and then there's these things called these breed mates where essentially it's like a faded mates concept so I really, really enjoy the world, but in this particular book, we follow two different characters. And for me, the characters felt pretty flat. I didn't care what happened to them, and I didn't care 
about them as a couple. So for me, I had no real investment in the characters, but I had an investment in the world and in the plot. And so right now I'm leaning towards like a 3.5 on this book, so it'll be kind of rounded up to a four on Goodreads. And then up next, I'm gonna be reading For the Hell of It by Kate Corbin. This is an angel romance, I believe. That's why I picked this book so it can fit this particular challenge. So I'm going to start reading that. I, all I know is that it's about a fallen angel who um, gets kind of put into like this reverse harem situation in the underworld and she wants to get revenge on the person who cast her down from heaven. But I will continue reading this book and I will pop back on the camera with another update. So today is the final day of the Paranormal Romance Readathon. I'm here to give you my final update. So yeah, let's talk about some of the books that I just finished. And by the way, not to toot my own horn, I did finish all the books that were on my TBR, plus a ton of other books that weren't on my TBR, so I consider this readathon a major success. See, now you would think I would actually go back and rewatch my other footage to see what books I have already talked about so I don't repeat the same books, but I didn't do that, so we're just going to go by what I think I still have left to talk about. So up first, I just finished For the Hell of It by Kate Corvin. This is a reverse harem paranormal angel romance. So this counted for the angel romance prompt on the bingo board. And you guys, I absolutely hated this book. It's not that I have a thing against reverse harems. I just felt the world building characters of the plot were just all very underdeveloped. Like I couldn't distinguish which male character was from the other male character. And I didn't really get why all these male characters were really interested in this girl. But overall, I was I was really quite disappointed with this book. I gave it a 1 out of 5 star. And this is, I believe, the first book in a series. So I definitely will not be continuing on in this series. Then I believe I already talked about this book. It is The Dichotomy of Angels by N.R. Walker. This is an LGBTQIA um, angel romance. And it's also Faded Mates. And the author is an indie author. And I believe I already talked about this, but I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars really quick. Um, it's a slow burn, angsty romance that is a little bit emotional, but I really love the journey that this book took me on. Now, before I sign off and conclude this vlog, I also received a package from Valentine PR. I believe that's the company name. And they sent me some paranormal romance books. And I'm so thankful that they decided to send me these books. I will show you them right now. So they sent me a nice bag full of candy. And then they also sent me three books. So let me show you the books. But like, let's take a moment just to appreciate like this beautiful packaging. Like, isn't this not so cool and so in theme with this readathon? So before we get into the books, you see they gave me like a little nice broomstick pen. The first book that I received was The Shadows by Kristen Proby, and this is book one in the Bayou Magic Mystic. I think, sorry, Bio Ma <laughs> No, it is Bayou Magic Novel. Wow, that took me a long time to get this right. And this looks like this is about a female who has a gift of um, premonitions. She has visions of um, the future, and there is a serial killer, and she must work with, a, I believe, an agent, I think an FBI agent, to try to check down to try and track down the killer before it is too late. So this one sounds really good. Up next, I have The Dark Ones by Rachel Van Dyken. This is book one in the Dark Ones saga, and I believe this is a vampire romance. So this one looks really cool and really kind of spooky, a little bit eerie, and definitely a little bit steamy. And then finally, I have War of Hearts by S. Young, or um, the author is also known as Samantha Young. I believe she wrote the uh, Dublin Squad series. Do not quote me on that. And this one looks like a shifter romance. Yes, uh, looks like our main hero is a shifter and there is some type of war going on. And I'm sorry, that's a horrible synopsis, but I have seen this book pop up everywhere on booktube and now I'm so excited that I finally have a copy so I can dive into this one. And because Valentine PR is so freaking cool, all these books are also on audio, so Thank you for that. <laughs> and so that is it. I hope you guys enjoy this reading vlog. I put a lot of time and effort into this, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the readathon, and I also hope that you enjoyed the buddy read. So I'll catch you guys with a brand new video. Peace.